Hello, I'm Brian Whipker, Extension Floriculturalist at NC State University. In this PGR plant tips video, we're going to specifically look at foliar sprays. So let's get started. I'd like to first start off with by thanking Fine Americas for supporting the production of this video. So when you look at foliar sprays, it's probably the most preferred method of application because they're easier to do and they're low cost. But there's a number of factors which can affect the efficacy of a foliar spray. And so by managing those chemical, plant, and environmental factors, we can get the most effect out of that PGR application. So what are those factors that can be improved to help improve that efficiency? And first of all, it's the chemistry, then knowing how the PGRs move in the plant, and then the environmental factors. So when we look at the relative absorption of a lot of the PGRs that are out there, and the PGRs are listed on the left by the trade names in the middle and then the key factor there is that column on the right and that is the absorption that occurs how quickly is it absorbed in the plant and it ranges from as little as half an hour up to 24 hours that chemicals absorb and so you need to try to keep that leaf as wet as possible to help with the absorption of that chemical into the leaf of the plant and so that will help get the most out of your PGR application. So when you look at foliar applications to the leaf, it gets applied to the leaf, and that movement does vary in the plant because most PGRs are very actively moved in the xylem, that's the up and down tissue of the plant, and not out of the leaf, and that's the phloem. So therefore, you have to have good coverage on these plants in order to have a good amount of growth control. So when we're looking at PGR specifically for a spray, we're roughly looking at applying two quarts per hundred square feet. And that gives enough chemical to cover the leaves and you also have a little going to the stems and also down into the soil system uh, for a little of the uptake and then movement around the plant. So that two quarts per hundred square feet is the standard we're using for PGR applications as foliar sprays. If you don't have that type of that, uh, coverage, you can see uneven results. One side got hit uh, on that mom on the left, and, and the side that did have coverage was on the left because it was delayed versus no coverage on the right, and the plant's bigger, and there was delay. The other situation that occurs sometimes with uh, uh, foliar sprays is missing some of the shoots under the canopy, and you can see a water sprout on the, the mom on the right. So when you're looking at foliar spray, here's some work we did with Abide, looking at both the top view and the side view for the, this violet. So you can see that you get increasing control as you increase the rate of Abide on those plants. The same thing's happening here on the pink snapdragon. So after 12 part per million, you get control, and then you have some increasing control if you go up on the rate. So works very well. The same thing goes for an Easy Wave Red, Petunia, Abide, uh, starting at 12, more so at 24 and 48, had excellent control of these Easy Wave Petunias. And then with Piccolo 10XC, you can see that 25 part per million did control some excess of stretch. Probably, uh, I don't know if you want to target as high as 50 parts per million. Uh, you might want to go in between, but you, you did have effective control of stretch occurring on these coleus. And then finally, when we're looking at Angelonia with uniconazole, really between a 10 and 20 part per million helped control some of the growth of those plants. So there are a number of factors that do improve absorption. So you get more of that chemical taken up by those leaves and that includes high humidity, limiting the air movement because of course that's going to dry the leaf quicker, doing it on cloudy days because there's less sunlight that's going to dry those leaves, and then making the application either early in the morning or later in the afternoon will also help improve the absorption of that chemical. So 
what we're looking at when we do that leaf application, we want that absorption to happen and move around the leaf. And that's represented by the green uh, spiky arrows because we don't have the chemical moving out of the plant. And so when we have good wheat leaf wetness, we have a good dis distribution of that PGR around the plant leaf and you have growth control. If it dries too quickly, we don't have uptake of that PGR, so you get less effect of controlling that growth, and that's not a good thing. So when we did do a study that we looked at applying a PGR uh, and then came back 24 hours later and wet it very lightly, we didn't wash anything off, we just wet it again, what did we have? We got 10% increase in growth control just because the re-wetting allowed more uptake to happen because the chemical was still there on the leaf surface. surface. So in summary, again, we'd like to uh, thank Fine Americas for supporting this podcast. And when you look at foliar sprays, they are the preferred method of application because of the low cost and how easy they are to apply them. But to get the most out of your foliar spray applications, you need to manage a few things, make sure the humidity is high, don't have a lot of air movement, preferably of making the applications on cloudy days, and then making the applications either early in the morning or later in the afternoon, which allows slower drying of that leaf surface. And if you do that, you'll have better uptake and better results with your foliar spray application. So with that, thanks again for watching this tips video.